We're moving along here with getting our Phantom 1 clutch back together. So we have our flywheel plate in place. I have these two brass pins in here so we can slide, slide the clutch um, assembly onto there. You want to make sure that your bearing, your magneto bearing is in there. Um, it's a type of bearing, they call it a magneto bearing. It's not really in a magneto, of course. So yeah, so we have everything in place here, fastened in. And so now it's time to bring up the pressure plate clutch assembly. And uh, you also wanna make sure that in the end of that, um, you have your plunger that goes in here. I'll show you that here in just a moment. So I'll bring our, Bring this guy on around. And so that's this guy here. And that plunger, it's a spring loaded plunger and that pushes your center plate back in order to engage your clutch brake. You also wanna make sure you have your throw out bearing and your clutch brake and all of that, those items in place um because this is going to be your last chance to get that on if you don't have it on now because they won't thread on when everything is up in place all right so we're ready to start lifting this guy up Back not too many years ago, I used to be able to bench press these up and get them in place, but I'm afraid those days are far behind me. Man, this is just a smarter way to handle it. They did on the adjuster. What we got to do? Closing in on it. So, I'm going to do a little demonstration on the um, clutch adjustment for the internal adjusting of the P1 clutch. Alright, just wanted to get a few things out of the way here. Okay, so um, you'll see in the instruction sheets they give you a distance and this distance is where I have this feeler that I've made set and you want to decide um, by reading the instruction sheets which which distance it is for your car 
So now I have um, one of these levers set um, using the, the factory tool. So you, I have that distance there. You bring the lever out. See that little bit of movement there. Alright, that's a little wide, but it's a good place to start. So then we lock the lock nut. <clears throat> and then, uh, so now we have this one set. Now I'm doing this without the bell housing in place. This is just a rudimentary adjustment to get things started here. So now you'll see the tool, the factory tool. You have one that inserts into the hex there, and then you have the other one for locking. So now we just bring the other lever up till it just barely starts to touch the uh, sleeve of the throwout bearing. So I'll probably do another video doing this with the bell housing all on so you can see what that's like. Alright, so we're just about just touching there. Once it starts to push, then it'll push the other lever, push it away from the other lever. So. Okay, now we lock this up. <laughs> okay. Then we rotate the engine to get to the other two. And again, And then the last one. Okay. All right. So that's doing the adjustment. So now things are going back together. The next stage of this is going to be 
putting the lower section of the bell housing on. Um, I prefer to get the bottom section on um, with just a couple studs just that way I can activate the um, the clutch and make sure everything's free and, and working well so I may need to back up the camera a little bit to work on getting that in place Okay. So I just slide that guy there. Okay, if I can get this stud in there, it'll... Okay. Let me see if this pushing goes in here. No. See the clutch. See the mechanism work. I'll see if I can reach down here. With the other hand. Okay. Feel the releasing. I think we're dragging them as the upper section. Of the bell housing one thing I wanted to point out is that um you can actually operate the car not I wouldn't drive it but you can on jack stands or whatever the case may be without driving it and just to sort of check that your clutch is good and free you can even adjust in your clutch brake but you don't want to adjust you want to be careful with adjusting the clutch brake because you want to make sure you have the locking plate and it's not secure because if you have those loose um, and you start the engine it'll grab and wind it right in and you can do some serious damage so I'm just gonna put a wrench deal feel good and tight So, and um, also, I had started my last video, I already had the springs and spring caps in place. 
And uh, you also see under here about an eighth inch thick spacer. And uh, those spacers were, are typically removed to allow more spring pressure as the clutch wears and to give you a little bit of grip to give you a few more miles on the road with the old clutch linings and center plate. Um, so a lot of times when I redo a clutch, these are missing. So I need to make new ones and install them, which I had to do in this case. But that is a trick that if you um, just want to get a little bit more out of your clutch and you have these spacers in, sometimes removing them will get you another couple years. A few hundred miles, or maybe even a couple thousand miles. And we work this item, this guy back in to position. Drop it down a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I think that's relaxing thing some. Threads are nicely engaged. I'll just put this in place. All right. So now it's a matter of putting in all the studs. I normally like to get them all in place finger tight. These are going to pull up into place here. So it's typical, I think anyway, for a bolt or a stud to go down through a hole and a nut to be on the bottom. And I think the thinking was that if the nut fell off, at least you'd still have the rest of the bolt or the stud hanging in there doing something.
reach this one fairly easily. And then here. tricky getting past the clutch lever here. Get a tap. I'm looking like I'm a little low on flat washers. Well, and that's why I was stuck on the other side. There's one. I definitely got to order more lock washers. It's gonna be a fun one. Let's just see. And there's another uh, flatty. The old locky. Snug down that one. Okay. How's I put that one in? 